Hey, my name's Daryl Rouse, Rhymes with House, and this is part five of a five-part series and the final part on how you can run your business like a business so it's efficient, effective, profitable, enjoyable, and it has balance. All the things that you thought you wanted at the start of your career, but maybe you're one, three, five, or seven years into your career and you don't quite have it yet. Well, all of these things I'm going to talk about, I've learned over my 34 years. I'm still learning today, but most of them I'm doing and I'm actioning in my business today. So, number one, as a strategy, you have to try and be first rather than be better. Now, think about that for a second. You have to be first in a category. You have to be first to do something, especially in real estate. You can't just follow the person that did it first and do the same thing as them because they'll always hold a part of the, of the client's mind that they were the first ones to do it. Good example of that is Charles Lindbergh. We know he was the first one to fly across the Atlantic solo. If you didn't, you know that now. Who was number two? We know Neil Armstrong, first one to walk on the moon. Who were the other two guys that went up there with him? Who was the second guy to walk on the moon? So if you can't be first in a category, don't, don't copy your competition and do the same thing because you'll never have that, you'll never have that traction that that first person had. What you have to try and do is create your own category like, like Amelia Earhart did. She was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. So she couldn't be the first person, but she could be the first woman. So she created her own category. And that's what you need to do in real estate. You need to differentiate yourself from everybody else out there. So you need to find things that you can do where you're not following your competition. I mean, I did this really well at the start of my career. I looked around and I said, okay, what's everybody doing? And I looked at, and remember this is 34 years ago, so it'll be slightly different from today. But no one was out there knocking on doors saying, hi, do you want to sell your house? So I thought, you know what, that's going to be my thing. And I knocked on doors literally six hours a day, six days a week for years. And that's how I built my whole business. So that differentiated me, that's a hard word, that differentiated me from my competition. All the sellers in that area would physically see me. Now, people had farm areas, but what I decided to do was literally farm the whole city. I didn't stay on one little geographic area. I just knocked on doors everywhere. If you had a farm area... You're pretty much assured if you were in Long Beach, California in the late 80s through the 90s into the early 2000s and you're at a farm area, I was going to come knocking in that area at some point in time and I was going to skim business off you because I was there and I was there at the right time and I knocked on the door at the right time and I got that business. So that's one of the things that made me different. The other thing that made me completely different is that I teamed up with my wife. Again, early 80s, sorry, mid 80s, late 80s, I teamed up with my wife, Kim, and that differentiated us. We were a married partnership that was working in real estate and there weren't any other really high producing real estate agents back then that worked as a partnership. So we really made that work for us. But the point of this is find something where you can be first in a category. Find something that makes you stand out. And today, you know, if everyone's just doing Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or whatever it happens to be, Maybe start your own YouTube channel. A lot of real estate agents do that, but they don't promote it. So there's lots of things you can do from an electronic standpoint to cause you to stand out, and that's how you have to start to think. Number two, this one came along quite accidentally. I was in a listing appointment in my early years, and it was pretty obvious I wasn't going to get the business. Both parties, husband and wife, didn't like me, and quite frankly, I didn't like them. And I'm just about to walk out near the end of my presentation. I hadn't gotten up yet, but in my head I'm thinking, no, oh, this is a waste of time. Now I thought, well, hang on. Why don't I use this opportunity to practice with a live person? Mr. and Mrs. Seller don't know that they're now going to help me train. As opposed to most times when I'm training or, or learning new techniques, it's with other real estate agents or with a coach or with a trainer. Here's an opportunity for me to actually do this and test these techniques in front of two live sellers. Now obviously all this happened in a microsecond in my head. So as I'm getting towards the end of the presentation, I go, great, just sign there and I'll get started right now, knowing I had no chance of getting it. And the clients go, well, well, well hang on a second, we're, we're not ready to move forward yet. And I remember sitting back and go, why? And they go, well, we've got two other agents we're interviewing. And so I said, well, may I ask why? And I almost belligerently kept doing that. I had nothing to lose at this point. I wasn't going to get the business anyway. And to jump ahead, I did not get the business. But 
I kept practicing. I kept practicing techniques. I practiced my categorizing the objection, isolating the objection, a simple isolation technique called, oh, may I ask why? Or, or oh, gosh, I don't understand why you'd need to talk to other agents. I did things that a brave person would do because I had nothing to lose. I've talked about the great philosopher Monty Python before saying, if you start from nothing and go back to nothing, what have you lost? Nothing. So from that point forward, if ever I was in a listing presentation and I'd taken the time to get everything ready and I'm in the house and I've now spent a total of one or two hours, you know, an hour prep time, an hour in the appointment, and I know I'm not going to get the business, I'm not going to waste that time with those clients. I'm going to use them as live practice. And that worked really well for me still to this day, 34 years later, I still do that. Not as often because I'm a bit more careful now on the appointments I go on, but when it does happen, I go, whoop, here we go, live practice. So try and use those opportunities. Take advantage of those things that are thrown your way. Okay, number three, and the final one for today, and I'm not sure where I heard this, but I heard it recently. It said, be brave for 30 seconds and it will change your life. If you can be brave for 30 seconds, everything can change. And I'm talking about with a buyer, when you're in a listing appointment, when you're negotiating, e even when you're prospecting, even just asking for the appointment. So someone, you know, they want to sell the house and you start to chicken out a little bit, just be brave. Be brave for 30 seconds and keep that in your head. Keep it in your head all the time. At the end of a listing presentation, every agent, no matter how experienced they are, and let me tell you, it still applies to me today after 30 something years in the business, you still get a little bit of fear that comes up when it comes time to ask for the business, especially if you don't think you're quite there. So you can put that fear aside and just be brave. And if you can't be brave, pretend to be brave. Okay, you don't have to be brave, you just have to pretend to be brave. And I know that's semantics, but it's amazing when you change that process or that thought process to your, to your subconscious, or to your conscious mind, remember the words we use, the conscious words we use are the pathway to our subconscious mind. Everything changes. Well, I don't want to be brave. You know what? I'll act brave. So that's my last and final tip in this five-part series. Be brave for 30 seconds in any part of your business and it can change your life. Please like and subscribe. Hit the little bell if you want to be reminded when I do my next video. And that's it for now.